the, um, the Kedushas Levi and other Akronim discuss why is it that we say often in the Gemara when there's an unanswered question, the Gemara ends off with a teku, which means to stand, but also the Bali Jewish say teku stands for Tishvi Yataris Kushvius Abayos. Eliyahu is going to answer all of our unanswered questions when Mashiach comes. The question is, our greatest Rebbe was not Eliyahu Anavi. Our greatest Rebbe was Moshe Rabbeinu. So why isn't it Neku? Moshe Yataris Kushvius Abayos. Why is it not Kateka? Why Eliyahu Anavi? The Kedushas Levi and others answer that in order to answer a halakhic question, you have to be somebody who's involved in the world. You have to be somebody who's within reality. You have to be somebody who knows about what's going on. El Yohanavi's alive. El Yohanavi never died. He went up to Shemai, but he comes to every priest, he comes to every say there, and he's around. Moshe Rabbeinu. Yes, he's Moshe Rabbeinu, but Moshe Rabbeinu died. But his Baruch buried him. Dafka El Yohanavi, because El Yohanavi He's involved in the world, he's involved in the world of Torah, and obviously involved in the world at large. Uh, maybe there is no one else greater in our generation that could be a teku personality and role model for us than Rabbi Tamler, who for the past decades and decades has been someone who has been involved both in Torah and in the world around him, taking everything in the world and giving us the perspective of how Torah lenses view that topic. A perfect example is today's shir, as we will hear, but uh, it is our schutz to be able to have such a role model and a leader for us to share words of Torah this morning. So without further ado, Harav Tamler. They all gave the introduction that it's important if you're going to deal with halacha that you should know the mitzvahs, know the facts. The topic that I chose to speak about is really a bipartite, two parts. <laughs> Number one, you have to know the facts in order to pass Kavashayla. But number two, you have to believe in the Rebbeinu Shalom also. It's, uh, our frame of reference is different. The story of the swordfish broke for me in 1968. And uh, I don't know to what extent there are copies of the article that I wrote in 1968, the allotted status of the source fish. I didn't write the article in order to give up sight on the source fish. That I thought was not under question. How many of you? Your mother's home ate your filth of fish made from swordfish. How many of you ate swordfish? Who ate swordfish? There was never a shine Swordfish is among the fish that you don't eat. <laughs> Why don't you eat it? Because it's not kosher. Swordfish are available on the market. Every market has swordfish. In Kihila, Kedosha, the Munsi, uh, we have swordfish sold in the shop right uh, every day. Uh, that's why it's very strange when Rav Shepta has ran out of what to say, so he put into the Jewish press so, a column in which the best thing to do is say that swordfish is really kosher, but because I used it to attack the conservatives, it was a useful thing that I did. But swordfish is kosher. You have copies of that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a day after a Jewish press article appeared, I was sitting with our chef uh, at a suit uh, there, right next to me, and I asked him, uh, 
Uh, am I supposed to answer what you wrote? Yeah, I don't plan to do so. I said, I said but one question bothers me. Did you ever see a swordfish? Did you ever go into the fish store in March of the Heights and ask the man, do you scale the swordfish? Read the literature, and all kinds of nonsense is in the scientific literature. Some fish, like swordfish, lose their scales when they come out of the water. But no one who ever studied the swordfish, who ever saw a swordfish, says that's not true. Ask the fishermen, <laughs> do they, do, is, your, is your net filled with, with, with scales from swordfish? No one ever heard such a thing. You look through the literature, there's no such mention of the swordfish losing its scales. But the first comment, and that's the only comment I'll make it about Rav Shefza, Shigigas Talmud, Ole Zodon. When it comes to halacha, you can't make the six. There's no shigoga. It's amazing. If you didn't see a swordfish and you wrote about the swordfish, la halacha, then you cause a sin, but maybe it's not the shogi. Yeah, that's as clearly as I can say it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, there was one moko that I didn't, I didn't give you. Why? Because I did give it to you because I'm not an, at home in my library where I think organized a little better. I want to refer, refer to Arashi in Baiko. Remember, kosher fish, kosher birds, kosher animals are listed in the Torah. In Pasha Shemini and in Pasha A next week. End of Pasha Shmini, the very last Rashi in Pasha Shmini, on the Posuk, Lahavdil ben Atomeu ben Atoho, O ben Chayo Hanacheles, O ben Chayo Shaloto Yocheo. It's a very strange. What is that Posuk telling you? Pasha Shmini has Posuk after Posuk telling you, Es Asher Teochel, Baserloto Yocheo. That's the whole of all Pasha Shmini. What's the last Pasha in Pasha Shmini tell you? That I told you this, for what reason? So Rashi explains. The Kashi is obvious. It's a redundant Pasha. No, not redundant. Rashi, Lahavdil. Listen carefully, and if someone has a, 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 a home machine, look, it's the very last Rashi in, in, in the, in the peg. Lo bilvad hashoneh. I don't want you to tell me what the Shulchan Aruch says. That I told you in the whole Pasha of Shmini, what the Shulchan Aruch says. I need your contribution. Ero. I don't want you to tell me what I told you that a swordfish is or is not kosher. I want you to tell me what did you find when you examined the swordfish. I want you to be your day not the halachas, the mitzvahs, the reality. Then the Rashi continues. Ben atomei ba'atoh. The Pasuk continues. La'aku ben atomei ben atoh. So, Loma, I need to tell you, la'aku ben atomei ben atoh, you mean ben chamor l'poh? I want you to be able to differentiate between a chamor and a pola. A chamor is not kosher, a pola is kosher. No, hello, kvar mufurashem hein, every knows that. Ela bein tomei l'lochor, l'tohor l'lochor. 
בין נשחת חוסי של חנה לנשחת רוגבו. השוייטר comes in to your house, you live over in town. It doesn't happen anymore because in YU we don't teach shrit anymore. Don't teach shritus anymore. So, Baruch Hashem, all animals are kosher. Uh, no problem, Bush. Yeah. And in the old days, when I was beginning the Rabonus, unless you could talk to the Shochit in Halacha, he would look down upon the Rav, and you lost him as a member. My father's at Sal Thursday night. There was a sign in front of our house. Bezdin offers Shell or our music Isaac Tendlush. Thursday night, the women showed up with chickens, with puppets, with kishkis. Why? Was it kosher? Was not kosher? I remember I went to Shefton on the Lancy Street in the market, Shefton a live chicken. They opened up themselves. They are Chinas. They have to go to the Hof to ask a Chinas. We no longer have such a bond. No one should answer a Chinas like that. So what a Kaddish Baruch would do? Our chickens don't have any kishkis. <laughs> Our chickens have no, no puppets in it, right? No problem. Our chickens have no legs on, so you can't ask me whether the leg is broken or not broken. That takes care of all the Chinas. Comes Rashi and says, it's not good. There's a Nisra the Reise on everybody to know how to pass the Rashaim. You should know, see, Loma, Ben Chamol, the Pohar, any Indian can differentiate that. But the Shaitan comes in and says, you know, I was, it, was, it was Yom Kippur night, night before Yom Kippur, and I've been shafting all night. Here, a bunch of chickens. I don't, not sure whether I cut Rubo Shal Kondai. I cut the windpipe through more than 50%. So we put it aside to ask the Rav. She walks into the Rav and says, here, look at the chicken. Is it cut through 50% or 51%? 50% is straight. 51% is kosher. So what would a Rav do today? Why well, don't bother me. It's end of Yom Kippur. I have more important things to do. I got a drosh to make up. But you have to know how to differentiate. Why would you use a ruler, a micrometer, a laser beam? But you have to know. That's a mitzvah that I say after. Now, how do they not tell me, Ben, what? Tell me, what is for you, not for a boy, not for anybody else, but that's your for you to know. Ben Chai al he says, not so long, but Ben Tzvi Laro, and 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 Tzvi uh, a a chamor bo, a rod is a, is a wild donkey, right? It's a differentiate between a deer and a donkey. You have to be a donkey not to be able to differentiate. You don't have to be a dog for that. Hello, Kwamu for Washington. Ella, Ben Shenol, the Bar Simone Trefo to Sheva, the Nol, the Bar Simone Trefo to Sumo. The woman came in Thursday night with a chicken with a broken leg. He asked the Rav, when did the leg, leg break? During the processing of the chicken? Or was it broken before? If it was broken before, it's straight. If you broke it later, it's kosher. How did the Rav gonna know how, when, <laughs> when the chicken broke its leg? And so it's a simple in the shofar, oh, no problem. You can see. Any, any doctor here, any, any, any housewife here, maybe we know. You, you want to know whether it's a, 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 a child fell and hurt his leg? You can take a look. If your leg swells up and it's purple, right? It's time to go to a doctor, right? If it hurt his leg and it's red, okay. You give him a lollipop, but everything's okay. That's where we start. That's the halal. Okay. Next point.
זה טוב לו מכל אשר במים, פוסק עם פרשת שמיני. כל אשר הוא סנאפי וקשקשס, וקשקשס במים, בימים ובנחולים, עושה אותו חטא. כל אשר אין לו סנאפי וקשקשס, במקום שרץ הבעיה, ספר, שקט שהוא לוחד, קטי. למסור לו שוחרו, לבוסים תשקטו, כל אשר אין לו סבא וקשקשת, במים שקט שהוא לוחד. נקסט פרשה, נקסט ויקס פרשה, את זה תאכלו מכל אשר במים, תן לו סבא וקשקשת, שוחרו, אין לו סבא וקשקשת, אין לו סבא וקשקשת. ‫אז ‫הוא 
But you take a look and you see the myriad of shapes of fish, all kinds of scales, all kinds of tails, all kinds of fins. That's chat. The hydrotol by idea of the Boko Rancho to look at the fish, look at the scales, look at the fins. And you say, my no law, my say on the king. That's who it comes. That's the hydro total bear. That's how you perform the mitzvah of Nira Sashem. Nira Sashem was misinterpreted by most, including most of the children. It's not fear of God. That's that's fear of Onesh, that's obviously. Gina Hashem is like Gina Sakalo, to be aware of God's presence at all times. You come into an aquarium, you can go out having seen the fish, or you can go out having seen the Guru Hashem, and seeing what Kodesh Baruch Hu can do. That's what the intention. That's what the shot I think is. Okay. Well, I'll send that out to you someplace. The important thing is two things. It's really most contribution I can make to you. One is the Eagles Moshe on another battle that I had with the OU. One that I also bought to share my wife. We don't use the OU tuna. It's Tana tuna. Why don't we use the OU tuna? Because especially the big size tuna cans that, that I use in the yeshivas, yeah. they are packed in the South Sea Islands. No one ever saw, no Jew was ever present to see the packaging. That's what he did. The, that was the answer that the chef gave, that that tuna is safe. You cannot, if you're not allowed to buy tuna, where the, no one checked whether it's a fish that's kosher or not. And if anyone uh, is, keeps up to the, the with the literature there, uh, sushi is famous for its misnomer. You buy sushi and it says, this is tuna, this is, this is cod, or whatever, other, other names of fish. He says that in most places, if an inspector comes in, he finds that everything is mislabeled. That's how it seems. So all the shell did was write a tumor that said that in order to eat a kosher fish, you have to see that it has scales. And if it's packed in the South Sea Islands and no reputable Jew is present, then you can't buy it. That's all. That's the problem we have with the swordfish too. Why are you talking about the swordfish? Did you ever see a swordfish? Did you check for it has scales or not? It doesn't have scales, period. So why do you have a suffix in your mind whether it's kosher or not? Oh, the Knesset Hagadolo said, that's the, 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 the reference in the Shulchan Aruch, that, that we got. Okay. That's the 
Yodeya, the Bani Peke, Gimu Piski Chuba. There the discussion is already mentioned. What kind of scales does it have? We argue if Yeshua has passion, the inner nature of this. It has scales, but they have not something that if you bought a fish to your, to your wife, like she was protesting, it's going to mess up my kitchen. You're going to scale it, scales will fly all over. Chinese, that the scales do not fly all over, I can't remove those scales. And here you have, it can't be the Knesset's daughter that they made that, he made that mistake. He never saw a swordfish either, no doubt in my mind. But it had a Kabbalah that is kosher. What's the Kabbalah that has kosher? That it loses its scales as it comes out of the water. But it's not true. There's no reference in literature to it. There's no one who, I, I when I wrote the salafic status of the swordfish, it's 1968, 50 years ago I wrote it. And I didn't write it because I was interested in swordfish, because no one ate swordfish. No one's ever asked me a shy about a swordfish is kosher. Of course it's not kosher, no one ate it. I wrote the article because the conservatives came out suddenly, they're pasking the Chinas. And I wrote the article because of the second page of the article, the epilogue. There's a big battle going on in El Sustorio, I've been doubling it to Kosa. Nobody wants to talk dubbly, wants to talk straight. The reform want to daven at the Kosa. Someone take an ad in the paper, like big page ad with only two words. You want to daven in the Kosa? Please tell me to whom. To whom you want to love? You don't believe in God. You don't believe in Moshe. You don't believe there was a Torah. But who, who do you want to love into? But we have a gentleman's agreement. We don't talk that way. Because we'll estrange those who are already not Jews. We have two kinds of Jews in the world today. We have national Jews, and we have Jews who belong to Judaism, who called a religion called Judaism. Conservative reform have left our religion. They claim to be national Jews, Kolakolo. There's a show going on now. We are losing six million Jews. Same number as the world did to us during the show. Not only Germany did, but the world includes America. And Shazatzal tried to arrange it, and he was here during the show, arranged with the Havonim a meeting with President Roosevelt in Machimo. Couldn't get a radio. Couldn't find a plane to, to bomb the tracks to slow down the burning of the Jews. We have a new show going on now. We are losing six million Jews. Look at the statistics from the Pew, the Pew statistics. There are no third generation reform. They define Jewish identity. Do you claim to be of a Jewish origin? The third generation reform do not claim 
conservatives of a, a, a hundred that, that, that will follow the, the third generation claim to be Jewish. We've lost them. The effort has to be made to, to bring them from national Judaism into religious Judaism, into Judaism. scale is there, and in biology we differentiate different scales. You have a, a sturgeon has a ganoid scale. A ganoid scale is a scale she no nikloff that can be removed. It's part of the skin. It's called a scale because it's a deformation. That's called scale. It has nothing to do with cascasses. A sturgeon has every, every simon of Taphus. The Gemara gives an additional simon. It has a row, the eggs are black. Its mouth is ventral, it opens up over here, not over here. Uh, yeah, I mentioned a few things. heterocyclic tail. The tail is like the tail of a shark, one big and a little one. A kosher fish, like a, a carp, <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a salmon, right, has an even, evenly divided tail. These are sighted, sights of one that the mother gives. Here comes the Buddhist and the I'm not talking conservative, we're talking about it now. Right, once was a major organization, and now is pretty much defunct. But the goodness of one of them, they're the ones that, <laughs> that ran all the slaughterhouses, et cetera, et cetera. There. They, come, or they come up with a kosher fish list. The kosher fish list lists swordfish, sturgeon. Why? They went to the Museum of Natural History and asked them, which fish have scales? So they answered them. <laughs> All these fish have scales. What kind of scale? Oh, there we have, when I refer to you, that's, it, that's the fish which you makes the emphasis there. It has to be a scale, and the clefus beyond the other three. It has to be a scale that's removable as an additional integument on top of the skin. That's what a, a, those who, who still remember what, what a kosher fish looks like, what a carp looks like, what a white fish looks like. If you want to buy a whole one, or if you go fishing and you catch one, then that's a mess up your kitchen because you, you, you scale it and the scales fly all over. That's the clevis, the yard of the clean. So what's it, what, why is it on my focus when the swordfish is kosher? <laughs> go, go get a swordfish and, and check it. But no one ever saw a swordfish, including Shakta. Why? Why not? That's what the Rashi, that I didn't give you 
they to reproduce, but that's the last Rashi Yish meaning. And you have to know what's Tomei Lecho and what's Kosher Lecho. So give me just a, a quick, a quick review, a brief history. Yes, I lived in 1600. He's quoted in the Pisgah Chuba. He's the main source of information that we have about swordfish. He never claimed to have examined a swordfish based upon the fact that it was Makubul that people ate swordfish. And I asked around, uh, met the two Spadash Rabbanim in Lud. Here in Antis Hoyle, there, both in the 90s, right? and, and checked with them did they eat swordfish? No. Neither one had any record, any recollection of anyone saying that swordfish is function. Yet, it's sort of our, our Kabbalah, oh, by the side of them, they ate swordfish. In the 1950s, uh, of Savitsky, that's how Tom uh, Kocham of Posey in Boston, uh, a friend of the loves, uh, uh, said that swordfish is kosher because it's based upon the Knesset Hakadoma, who said that it was kosher. Without noting, he was in Boston. Boston is a fish country. <laughs> there are fish markets in Boston. Why don't you go see a swordfish? Didn't say you ever saw a swordfish. It's kosher because the test I know said it was kosher. And I got involved here in Nancy Soil. Rav Winterman, when he was in Alamoshi here, he was asked whether swordfish is kosher, he said it was kosher. So I wrote to him, I went to him, I went to see him, yeah. I said, but it's not kosher, why do you say it's kosher? The Knesset Sakhidova said it was kosher. What kind of answer is that? The Knesset said, well, who cares what the Knesset Sakhidova said? Because I, I suggested, there are other fish with long snouts that have scales. The, the famous sport fish, the sailfish that people try to catch, which is a much smaller than a, the so-called swordfish that's used for eating there. Yeah. Uh, it has scales, has good scales. The fact that it has a long beak doesn't mean it's also got bad scales. I went to him in 1965, right, reiterated the hetem, right, and said the reason I didn't find scales when I said, but I, I examined 10 swordfish, there are no scales. He says that's because they lose the scales when they come out of the water. I said, but ask a fisherman, where are the scales that come out of the water? Is it his net, etc., etc.? If Nesagidola said it loses the scales when it comes out of war. Then uh, history came to my side. It's so often there is a, a Torah journal, Hamor. Hamor has as its main function right, to distribute anything that my father was saying. It's a soccer organization. Whatever children my, my father-in-law would answer, they would come out bombasting against. On this thing, it came out positive. Maybe they said, oh, there's a Machloikis about swordfish. And they asked the Shrel about swordfish, said it's not kosher. Right? 
and I, I, I did some checking and, and it's not kosher. They agree it's not kosher. And they ran a battle against Agudas Rabbanim who said it was kosher, right? In order to, to, to for their political reasons, not, not, not worrying about the halacha. He and Eretz Yisrael, he's still, Roshem, he's still around. It's Rav Shimon Evrati, who came out with an attack on me, right? The Swotish is perfectly kosher, et cetera, et cetera. And then suddenly it all turned silent there. And now, if you call the OU and ask, is Swotish kosher? And after Rav Shekta said it was kosher, so and he's the main posting for the OU, right? <laughs> Your answer, and I wish you people would do it, there you'll see, it. ten of my Tamidim did it, I mean, ten, not ten, ten, all ten called and said, the answer by the OU is, it's not on our kosher fish list. That's the motion they keep it. Is it kosher? The answer, yes or no, is it kosher or not? No, no, it's not on our kosher fish list. Well, that's because they have trouble, our chapters, they said it was kosher, yeah. but they didn't put it on the kosher fish list yet. <laughs> okay. go to time is it's burned out already. The second half of the topic. Right? These are a few weeks of study. Here's where here's the shame. The Rosh Lita will will take over. And what do we do with the question, with the problem, with the tragedy that we were facing? Mainly the loss of so many budgets. Mm -hmm. They lost it. We know that about it. Here in Asia's soil, all I read, I can only read the. All you read is the problem that we are causing, that the Orthodox are causing, by, by not cooperating with the Reform Conservative, who want a more significant position. Most significant position, what? In the religious life of Am Yisrael. I was here, Shiva of the Towers. In the paper, I had a picture of the Koso on Shiva of the Towers, packed with people with being his power. Then they showed a picture of that area which was reserved for the reform. Not a single human being was there. Someone should be there. A stone fell just now in that area, and they showed a picture of a lady, one lady. I recognize that lady. She's there every single day of the year. Special, special their love of Kaddish Baruch Hu. <laughs> she had to be, the whole picture got, got caught there, as if there was a, one, one person, that one per person yeah, is as distant from orthodox, from, at least from reform, reform conservative as could be. She walks around all day saying till him at the coast. What did we do about that? That I believe to be the major 
task facing on this call today. What can we do to bring the people back? There's only one way that I know. The Midrash and Echa has a, an insightful Midrash. It says that at the time of the Choban, there were 365 religions in Eretz Yisrael. And they decided to dedicate one day to each religion. They couldn't find a day for the Bani Shalala. Use up all the days, 365 days. Couldn't get one for the Bani Shalala. That's our problem. They don't let us compete. They were afraid if they give day one, the day to the Bani Shalala, and people will come and taste each day a different Michael that belongs to the religion, they'll all join us. That's the only eight, eight, eight that I have. You have to reach out, bring them home for Shabbos, and say, look at my children, and you excuse me, look at your children. Which would you rather have? You have to fight for every Nishama, we would, no doubt about it. The Balchuva movement is insignificant. Numbers are not there, period. Interest is there, desire is there, the love of, of our fellow Jew is there, but the Mitzvah is we don't have the numbers. And they're inconsequential in the history of a nation. Got to do something about it. If everyone would agree to take home someone for Shabbos at least once a month, we do a far better job than all the Malchula movements are doing today. There are many, many things I would want to say. The time doesn't allow. Yes, Hashem. Because both was kind to us. I hope I'll be invited next year again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Taylor. I just want to uh, uh, let everyone know that today, officially, we uh, we passed the 4,000 uh, attendee mark of our three years, and uh, we're going to continue on August 16th. Uh, um, El Vav El, um, we're going to have the barrel wine, uh, August 16th, Thursday night, August 16th, uh, at the ENTL. Thursday evening.